two of our previous videos, Recording Acoustic Guitar Parts 3 and 4, we recorded the guitar using two microphones pointed at different spots on the instrument and blended them to create different tonal combinations. We intentionally separated these mics by some distance so that they would pick up dissimilar sounds that we could blend without interference. In a real mix, we might pan these two mics to one side. We might even pan them just a bit apart to make the guitar a bit wider. This can make the guitar sound much more realistic. But if we pan them all the way to the opposite sides of the mix, you will hear sound on the left and right with a noticeable sonic hole in the middle. With certain placements where the mics are far enough apart, this might be a nice effect, perhaps even giving the impression of two guitars playing at the same time. But with other placements that sounded good in mono, it might just sound kind of non-distinct, unnaturally wide with different notes seeming to jump out from different places. hearing two mics here, but this is not good stereo. True stereo recording starts with two matched microphones panned hard left and right. With careful placement you can get them into a position that will result in a realistic stereo image of the sound source that seems to float between the speakers as if the instrument was in the room with you. For acoustic guitar recording, you can use stereo microphone techniques when you really want to feature the instrument in a realistic and lifelike way. Most basic stereo microphone configurations fall into one of three categories. Coincident or XY pairs, where the mic capsules are as close as possible. Near coincident pairs, where they are separated by a few inches to a foot. And spaced pairs, where they are separated by more than one foot. We are going to demonstrate near-coincident and coincident techniques using a pair of Shure KSM-141 condenser mics in the cardioid setting. We will record the mics onto a stereo track panned hard left and right. It is a good idea to record stereo pairs to stereo tracks because if you apply equalization or compression, you will probably want to process the two tracks identically to maintain the integrity of the stereo image. The mics are 10 inches apart and 12 inches from the guitar. We centered the pair in front of the area between the 12th fret and the sound hole because this is the part of the guitar that produces the most appealing sound. If you are not sure where to place a stereo pair, just move your head around in front of the instrument until you find a spot where you like the sound and put the pair there. Let's listen to some finger picking. Notice how the guitar seems to float between the speakers. You can really hear the fingers picking the strings slightly left of center and the fret noise off a bit to the right when Alex slides that bass note up. We liked our near coincident pair, but we felt the guitar sounded a bit too close. The image was still a little too wide and we were getting too much low end again due to proximity effect. With this in mind, we moved the mics farther away, 19 inches from the guitar. At this greater distance, the two mics are getting a more similar sound, so the stereo image pulls a little bit more towards the center. With this setup, we really felt the guitar popped into place between the speakers and suddenly sounded very realistic, as if Alex was in the room with us. Let's compare these last two setups. Listen to the stereo imaging and the sense of depth.
If we had still felt the image was too wide at this distance, we would have moved the mics a bit closer together. Near-coincident stereo recording works because sounds from the left side of the guitar are louder in the left mic and vice versa. Also, the sound from the left of the guitar hits the left mic before the right mic and vice versa. This is the way human hearing works. You have two ears that are near coincident to each other, and your brain uses the difference in loudness and time arrival to tell you where sounds are coming from. Next, we set up a coincident or XY pair of the KSM-141 cardioid microphones. The capsules are placed as close as possible and aimed 90 degrees from each other. There is no time arrival difference between the mics, but they point left and right, so sounds from the left are louder in the left microphone and vice versa. The lack of time arrival differences with XY cardioids makes the sound even more centered. Sometimes this can sound a bit less realistic than a near coincident pair, but there is an advantage to coincident pairs. Because the sound arrives at the two microphones at the same time, the signals from the two microphones are perfectly lined up in time. Look at the striking similarity of the waveforms from the two coincident mics. If you decide to collapse your XY pair into mono, perhaps to move the guitar all the way over to one side of the mix, the tone will remain the same. In near-coincident recordings, the time arrival difference between the microphones results in phase differences at certain frequencies, and you can also see this in your waveforms. If you collapse a near-coincident pair into mono, you will probably hear a darker tone as certain parts of the waveform cancel each other out. Let's compare our coincident and near-coincident pairs collapsed into mono. The coincident pair still sounds very bright and natural, but the near-coincident pair sounds darker and muffled. We hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about stereo recording. Now let's go back to one of our near-coincident pairs while Alex plays us off.